question of the day. What is your favorite puzzle game? Now, no, I don't mean like Lufia 2 or Breath of the Wild. No, I mean a board game that is more puzzly. But then again, I also don't mean an unlock sort of game. I mean a game that when you play it, your brain is doing a puzzle to try to figure out how to maximize the points. And you say, Brian, that's any game. Well, yeah, technically, but specifically there are certain games that are more about a puzzle that you're trying to figure out quickly in real time to maximize your points, which brings us to a game today. But let me know in the comments below what your favorite uh, puzzly games are. Which brings us to Scarabia. Is that how you pronounce that, Brian? I don't know. Probably not. But you know what? Uh, it's just how we're going to roll with it. But I'm also looking forward to Pendulum and playing Agricola later, too. So it doesn't matter. But we're going to call it Scarabia, like a scarab in Arabia for that. <laughs> A game all about laying tiles out while you're excavating to find treasure. It's really an abstract puzzle game, but it looks good on the table. So let's take a look right now at what Scrabia is, how it plays, and we will come back up and talk final thoughts right now. So this is the basic setup for Scarabia. Everyone gets the same setup, albeit in a different theme. Ours is underwater theme, there's a desert theme here, there's a jungle theme, and then there's an Arctic theme as well. Now what's gonna happen is these four large tiles are gonna all be laid out exactly for everyone's board. And then you're gonna take your three dimensional mountains and you're gonna put those out. Those are basically just ways to block tiles on the board. You'll notice the scarabs. The scarabs are essentially how you're gonna score points in this game by closing off areas of four or fewer spaces with these polyominoes. And once these are closed off, then the scarabs are worth the amount of spaces in that excavation area. So this one would only be worth three points. Now, had we closed it in a little bit differently where uh, there's four, there's two scarabs in an area of four spaces or less, you would then make these scarabs worth uh, that many each. Now, let's just see if I can do this. There we go. So that excavation site, now granted you can't actually stick off the edge, but just for the sake of saying for this, one, two, three, four, both of those scarabs are now worth four points. So that's ideally what you're trying to do is keep your points uh, maximized. But the tricky part is the way you place these tiles is this right here. You have these mission cards, and much like the game number nine, one of these is gonna come up, you'll have to take that tile and put it on your board. The unfortunate thing is when placing that, you might end up eventually having to cover some scarabs that you were hoping to score, which is the downside because you also have to build adjacent. You have to explore adjacent from a tile that you just previously explored from. They at least just have to touch on one tile. And again, you have these mountains out here that block things as well and make it a little bit trickier. So the goal is to score as many points as you can based on these scarabs while trying to maximize how you're building to where you don't get stuck or don't get into a position where you'll never be able to close those in based on poor uh, placement. So that is how you play Scarabia. It plays until all of these mission cards have been played. You'll then check points, person with the most points on those scarabs uh, from these tokens that you gain from scoring the scarabs wins the game. And that's it. Super simple explanation. But that is what I love. I love a game that's literally, a, the rule book's thick because it's in multiple languages, but it's one set of pages for rules. can be played solo as well as two-player with a couple different variants. And so, uh, really excellent, um, quick explanation. But that is how you play Scarabia. You're going to have all these tiles out there, and hopefully you will have the most points. That's it. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, it is, you're flipping those mission cards and you're laying those polyominoes out there in such a way to maximize the most scarabs and the most spaces you can in one turn. Now, ideally, you're going to have multiple excavations close off at one time and score, you know, hopefully four points per scarab in each of those, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you're stuck placing because of those rules about placing adjacent. So let's talk presentation first. As an abstract polyomino game, I really like the way this looks on the table. I also like the way they're like, hey, don't throw these little boards away that you would normally punch out. Um, I like the way it looks on the table. I like that all four people have four totally different colored looking mats, boards, areas. Everything looks different, but you all play the same. You all set up the board the same. You set up your little mountains the same. I think that's really cool because it takes away any of the whole randomness. Well, your setup was better than mine. Everyone's got the same setup. 
but I like the way that that is so versatile. There's four sides to each tile and four positions those tiles could be in. I don't know if that's 16 or what, but that's a lot. It's a big number. I don't know if it's 16 or a bigger factorial. Someone help me with the math on that. But there's a lot of different combinations those could be in, and I always like that sort of thing. So presentation-wise, the game looks good. The tiles look good. It looks nice on the table. You get your little tokens. Simple. But then let's talk gameplay. So... I like the way that you don't just place polyominoes. You're not drafting polyominoes. You're forced to pick. They're forced to use a polyomino, and so is everyone else. They're all forced to use the same tile, and I like that because it means that you're not having to make the decision of, well, should I draft that one or should I take that one or should I play this one out of my hand? No, you play the one that everyone has to play at the same time, and hopefully you're doing it better than someone else. Now, does this lead into look over and see what the other player is doing? Yeah, you kind of have that issue that you run into a little bit, but... As for me and the way that this happened for us, I'm, I'm too focused on my game. I'm too focused on my puzzle to care about what anyone else is doing in each turn. I'll look over and see, oh, you scored points? Great, good for you. But I, it rarely ever happens because you'd have to have the same brain as someone else, the same thinking capacity as someone else, the same kind of logic processors as someone else. And, and we're all different, so that's not going to happen so much. Um, now, what I also like about this game is the fact that, but with all that being said, to me, this is another game killer for me. Uh, this is one of those things where this game will permanently kill a game that I've enjoyed in the past, but I'm not very good at, and that would be the number nine. He said, Brian, how, how does this kill number nine? They're totally different games. You're stacking numbers. No, essentially, they're very similar. You're all playing collectively the same thing at one time. You're all flipping up tokens to see if you could, you know, flipping up a card and you're placing that to, in the place to maximize the most amount of points. Is this one simpler than number nine? Absolutely. But I like the way it looks on the table better. I like the way that the polyominoes work better than stacking. Uh, you don't have to math it out quite as much with those, but also similar to um, whatever number nine I was just talking about. If you had multiple copies of this, you could also scale this game up. This is, a, this is a game that can scale with as many copies as you have in one play session at one time. And you can do this one online. You could be playing across Zoom or things like that right now. So really, really enjoy this game. It's a very simple, simple tile placement polyomino game. But it does a lot of really cool things, and it plays up the fact that it's a puzzle, and you're trying to do better at this puzzle than someone else. So that's me here on the Dice Tower. I'm Brian Drake, checking out Scrabia. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Dice Tower Brian. Until next time, we'll see you.